Hey, hey, welcome back to Pianist Academy. This is the first video in a series about bench position, posture, and hand shape as we approach playing the piano. Now, each of the videos in this series is going to be a deep dive into just one aspect of these topics. Today in particular is gonna be about where we sit on the bench and why we sit there. All of the reasons that go into why we sit there. Before we get into the meat of today's video, I just wanna say that all of the videos in this series, I'm calling them all beginner lessons, and that's because I go over this material at the first lesson with all of my in-person students. It's always the first thing we talk about. Those students might be complete beginners at the piano, but I also get referrals from other teachers, and sometimes they have been playing for three years, five years, more. Sometimes they're playing at a very, quite advanced level, even prepping for college auditions to be a music major, and they still haven't had this conversation with a prior teacher about where to put the bench, why it's important, what it unlocks, how to play with a good hand shape, and all of the things that we're gonna be talking about. So, despite these being beginner lessons and definitely, definitely valuable for the first time pianist, I think there are many insightful tidbits in these videos for the intermediate player and also even the advanced player as well. Okay, so let's jump in. Where do we sit on the piano bench? It's a very simple answer. We sit on the front half of the piano bench. And if you know where your sit bones are, there are two little bones in your bottom that it feels like, when you're, especially if you're sitting on a hard surface, it feels like you're kind of balancing on the two. I like to feel those about one to two inches back from the edge of the seat. Now, that's a very simple answer, but why? And that's what we're gonna spend the rest of the day talking about. Anytime we're sitting at the piano and playing music, we need the upper body to be as mobile and as free as it can possibly be. And that mobility stems from the hip joints. So I need to be able to lean in, I need to be able to lean out and lean right and left, and of course, combine all of those motions in any way that I see fit in the moment of playing. That could be for a technical reason, could be for an emotional reason or an interpretive reason or something like that. But I need all of that flexibility. Sitting at the edge of the bench facilitates all of that. It allows the hips to do their job the best possible way that they can. Now, if I move to the back of the bench, and this is where I see actually quite a few beginner students start, and even intermediate and advanced students sometimes come into their lessons and they look like this. I cannot lean as far forward. I definitely cannot lean as far back. I, I, I feel unstable and I feel like I'm actually gonna lose my balance. Beyond that, leaning right and left are also impeded. So it's not that any of this is harder, but there's a limited range of motion if we sit further back. And it's because we're putting more and more weight through other parts of our leg. Other parts of our leg are getting in contact with the bench and it's disrupting the freedom of motion. Okay, so we've talked about hips and we've talked about freedom of motion at the piano. The next thing we need to talk about is what the legs are doing. Of course, the right leg, usually the heel is planted on the ground and the right foot is resting on top of the damper pedal or using the damper pedal while we play. That's great. Do we put any more weight through the right leg? No, we should not put any more weight through the right leg except the weight of the leg itself. If we're using the right leg as an anchor or as a balance point, we are going to impede the ability of our foot to work the right way. We're gonna lose sensitivity in our pedaling. It's gonna be less controllable, it's gonna be less predictable, and we don't want that. So instead, we need to think about partly our core being engaged to have a good posture, but also the left leg is providing a lot of stability for the body. Not only that, but the left leg needs to be able to be in a variety of places at any given moment, depending on the needs of what we're playing. So of course, the left leg should be able to be in a neutral place just in front of us. It also needs to be able to reach for the soft pedal, maybe the sostenuto pedal, the two other pedals on the piano. It also possibly needs to come back and underneath us, underneath the bench, maybe out to the side of the bench. This is for more leverage if we're playing something that's really intense and we need more power, and the left leg needs to be able to move there to help facilitate that for us. Or if we're playing something that's way up high, the more we lean in one direction, the more we need something that's gonna lean in the other direction, like a tightrope walker. So the more I lean to the right, the more I need part of my body to go to the left, and that happens to be the left leg and the left foot. So if I need to play the notes that are way at the top of the piano, and I don't have time to shift on the bench or the bench is short enough that I can't, I need to be able to put my left leg out to the side and help balance that. To give you an example, if I keep my left leg here in this neutral position and I try to reach the upper notes, in order to not fall over, I actually have to be channeling a whole lot of weight and energy through the right side of the bench and into my right heel. Now, like we've already talked about, that's going to make my damper pedaling less than stellar. It's not gonna be as controllable, it's not gonna be as sensitive, not gonna be as precise. Those are all things that we don't want to have happen. All eliminated by just moving the left foot out. So left foot mobility, 
Again, this is another thing that is helped by being at the front of the bench. Let me give you an example. If we move back again to the back of the bench, probably the most important thing about moving back is our pedaling itself. In the right foot, we have a couple different muscles that control the lifting of the foot and the depressing. And this is the motion that we use to activate the damper pedal. You know, one of those muscles is right up here in the leg, right? And then there's another one that's further down that's helping to do this. The one up here is being pushed on, is being impeded by all of the pressure in the bench right here. The edge of the bench that's pushing on the thigh is impeding this muscle from really doing its job that the best that it can. So all of a sudden, moving back on the bench, we have another way that we can possibly lose sensitivity and control and the damper pedaling, all because the muscle that's controlling the foot is being impeded. It doesn't have freedom of motion. Now, of course, the same thing goes for the left foot. The soft pedal isn't used quite as often, but we have less control over the left foot lifting and releasing. Now, add to that these other things that we talked about. I can't actually put my left foot under the bench. I can't get it under there. I'm just, my leg is hitting the bench. There's no way for me to do it. I can't really get it out to the side of the bench. There's no way for the left leg to go. And if I could kind of get it in this position, it's not helping me with leverage at all. It's actually making things more uncomfortable. Lastly, if I need to reach in one direction, if I need to balance at the high keys and I need to stick the left foot out, I am now, my legs are very long and I'm running into the edge of the bench and I'm having trouble actually getting my left foot on the floor to help stabilize me. Now, if you have shorter legs than this, that's definitely gonna be a problem. If you have a longer bench than this, that's gonna be a problem. All of that's fixed by just moving to the front side of the bench. We get all that mobility back in the feet, cleaner pedaling, more sensitive pedaling, a better anchor point with the left leg and all that freedom of motion in the left leg also. Now you might say, but Charles, Charles, those are very advanced things to think about. Why, why are we thinking about them now? And I'd say, yes, they are more advanced things to think about, but as a beginner, if we can make this position, the correct position, the norm, if we can make that just the standard way we approach playing the piano, then when you get to points in repertoire or in technical work that you have to use other parts of the body, we don't have to undo something. We don't have to say, well, now we gotta move from the back of the bench to the front of the bench to make this easier. Uh, we don't have to diagnose a pedaling problem that's not from lack of practice, but that's simply from not being positioned the right way, not having the body in the right position. You know, whenever we learn anything, we wanna do it in the least number of steps possible. So if we can learn this right at the beginning, even before we need to use all of these techniques, then when it comes time to incorporate all of those things, when you as a beginner pianist become an intermediate player or possibly become an advanced player, when it becomes time to incorporate these things, they're already gonna be, the body's already gonna be in a place where it works. And there is no real added comfort from sitting at the back of the bench. It doesn't help at all. It doesn't make it any more comfortable to play the piano. It's just getting in the way. So if we can get in the habit of just sitting at the front, eliminating all those problems before we even know that they exist, before we even have repertoire that uses them, we're gonna be in that much of a better position when it comes time. All right, the last bit of the video is more of a personal reflection on playing from the front of the bench, not scientific at all. But I find that when I'm sitting at the front of the bench, I am more mentally engaged with what I'm playing. I'm more focused, which leads to more efficient practice, more efficient performance, anything else that's related to that. And it's not just at the piano, but I find this anywhere in life. If I'm at my desk and I sit at the front edge of my seat at my desk, I'm more engaged with what I'm working on. I used to teach choir rehearsal and vocal lessons. And if I had the singers be more at the front of their seat, not only would they have better breath support, which is great for singing itself, but they would be more engaged with what was going on in rehearsal. That's kind of a bonus tip for today. Sitting at the edge of the bench also provides this extra mental engagement, mental focus, more efficient practicing. So we can accomplish more in less time, right? And I think everybody would want that. That's all for today. I hope you found these tips and thoughts insightful, helpful. Uh, leave a comment below. Be sure and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. S consider subscribing to the channel and doing that notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. Remember, practice smarter, not harder. And I'll see you next time you visit Pianist Academy.